Greetings, brothers and sisters. As we become get closer to Christmas, we have been looking at some prophecies leading up to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 7. Before I begin my devotion, I just wanted to say that I'm really grateful for all the people that have contributed this year, in this unusual year, to these devotions that we as a congregation had an opportunity to enjoy. I just wanted to pass on my thanks to all the contributors. So we read this passage. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, asked the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahab, Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Here now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. These words were quoted by the angel to Mary and Joseph. When it came to the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. A prophecy that was spoken approximately 700 years before Christ. So before I continue with that thought, I want to take you back to the situation in Isaiah's day. Ahaz was not a good king. He might have been a son of David, but he wasn't a good king. He had taken up with the idols of all the nations around them. He had turned the Israelites away from their true God to idol worship. We would call this, he had brought the people of Judah into an adulterous relationship with the gods of the nations around them. After all, God had the Israelites or the, Jude, the people of Judah were God's covenant people. Now, Ahaz foolishly decided to close the temple, switch out, switch off the lights, get rid of the sacrifices and worship these other gods. It was such a sad, sad situation, this relying on other gods, refusing to trust in the Lord God, the God of his fathers. Well, I'm not going to go into the geo political, military situation of the day. But King Ahaz found himself at odds with a couple of powerful neighbours. There is Israel to the north, there is Syria to the northeast, and then there was also Edom to the southeast. And Ahaz went out to fight a battle against these nations and he lost. He lost 180,000 men. The, the people of Judah were humiliated. And so we find Ahaz in Jerusalem trying to get it ready for a siege that he was expecting as the nations of Israel, Syria and Edom surrounded Jerusalem to capture it. So it was into this situation that Isaiah arrives, that Isaiah speaks to him. And we read this. Be careful. Keep calm and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smouldering stubs of firewood. Aram, Israel, have plotted your ruin, saying, Let us invade Judah, let us tear it apart and divide it amongst ourselves. Yet this is what the Sovereign Lord states, it will not take place, it will not happen. What an amazing prophecy this is. Be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart, because it will not happen. And so we get to more to our text later on. And Isaiah, or God through Isaiah, says to Ahaz, you can ask for a sign. You can ask for a sign, any sign, be it the highest something on the, in the highest or something in the depth of the ocean, you can ask for any sign whatsoever and I will do it to prove that I will keep my word. But Ahaz had no confidence in God. Ahaz didn't even want to ask for a sign. In fact, he said, you should not put the Lord your God to the test. 
Now that is true in most, on most occasions you shouldn't, but in this case, he was invited to ask for a sign. He who had been, uh, who had brought the people of Judah so far away from God is invited to trust in God once again. And Ahaz simply refuses to do so. Well, we know that this prophecy to Ahaz was fulfilled despite the fact that Ahaz refused to sign. We read this. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, this ful fulfillment of prophecy occurred, like I said, approximately 700 years later. But it's so important for us, isn't it? To trust in the Lord, not to be afraid, not to lose heart, to stay calm. How important are these words for us today? Because we too are, are surrounded by a culture that does not honour God. We live in a world that does not honour God. And what's the sign for us today? Well, it's the same sign, really. The virgin will give birth to a child and he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Why shouldn't we be afraid? Well, not only because of the miracle of the birth of Christ, but also because this child became a king and he rules and reigns in this world. And we need to know that. Ahaz refused to be comforted by this sign. He refused to uh, honour God in all of this. But what about you? What about me? Will I trust in the Lord? Will I lose heart? Will I be afraid? Well, brothers and sisters, this is the encouragement that scripture gives us. We hear the words here. We want to trust in God. We want to put our hope and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we will. So as we come towards Christmas, we remember that God always fulfills his word and that Jesus Christ, that all promises are yes and amen in Jesus. And as a Christian, we have purpose, but we also have confidence that God is with us, that Jesus is with us, the one who died and has risen, who ascended to his father and rules this world for the sake of his people. Let me lead you in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come across a foolish king, Ahaz, who simply refused to trust in you, to ask for a sign. We pray, Lord, that this wouldn't be the case with us, but that we would have every confidence in you, that you are our God, we are your people, and you love us. We thank you, Lord, for the birth of the Saviour and, what, and how that birth has changed the world and it certainly has changed our lives. No matter what happens, we have no cause to be afraid. We can simply rest in your promises. In Jesus' name, amen.